So it's almost 24 hours now, but news out that Ray Lynn Castle has resigned as Australia's, well, Australian Rugby's chief executive. My cl kids are in the other room cleaning up their mess. So um, if you hear any noises, it's that. Australia's cleaning up as well. So um, yeah, apparently she said she wanted to leave things. Well, it was going to be hard to have kind of clear air if she was still in the picture. So she's decided to take the step to to resign from what i've read she's being largely um thanked not thanked it's not the right word um she's getting a bit of respect what's the word i'm looking for praised um uh, for for taking the decision to step down because there's been if you haven't been following it there's been ongoing war of words kind of thing kind of one-sided war of words about getting her to step down and uh she was definitely becoming a focal point so she's been praised for taking the decision to step down and not make things about her versus like the the former captains who wanted her gone uh although the new zealand herald put out an article today which i haven't read which says um the real reason she steps down that's about as clickbaity as a headline as you will ever get you need a premium subs uh, subscription to the new zealand herald to read that article so um nah not going to read that so she stepped down uh it's been a bit of a tumultuous time uh she's a bit of a divisive figure that's probably fair to say uh she was appointed in 2017 she's kind of had to deal with a few controversies i think there's been some positives and we'll talk a little bit about the future uh, and this one as well. I should say up front, I am definitely no expert on the goings on of any rugby organization at this kind of executive level. I got no idea what they do. I just know that they run the show. So um, usually I'm more interested in the on field stuff than what goes on in the boardrooms. And I'm pretty thick with this kind of stuff as well, I have to admit. Um, it's been a one that's been building up for a while and even me thick as i am with some like reading into some nuanced stuff uh even i was picking up on it because if you weren't aware uh a while back Raylene castle turned down or at least i'm pretty sure they turned it down um uh, a bid from fox sports who's the current broadcaster of um of rugby in australia she turned down their bid to be the broadcaster going forward for the next TV deal for Super Rugby. Um, because it was low. It was a lot lower than the previous amount. And I guess Fox couldn't justify spending the amount they were on rugby. Because it wasn't bringing in the numbers that it used to. So she decided to look at the market. And uh, see what else was out there. And it just so happens. And like I said, even I picked up on this over time. Because I follow like Fox Sports Australia on Twitter and stuff. These articles just started popping up about just talking smack about her basically and how she's got to go. Things stink and um, rugby in Australia is in a, in a real quagmire and it just started piling on and piling on and piling on. And I found it a bit kind of disingenuous. Some A lot of those guys, those if you weren't aware, again I should stop jumping ahead of myself, 11 and then later 10 because one of them, Michael Lona, decided to not take his name off it uh 10 former wallaby captains penned an open letter to say that they need to get rid of her because the game's in a bad place and they need to you know to reevaluate and get back to things and whatnot and a lot of those guys have pretty strong connections to fox like as commentators like gregan and phil kearns and whatnot so i thought that was a bit especially the timing of this given all the stuff that's going on it seemed pretty opportunistic to me um but yeah, that's essentially what happened. They, they built pressure. Uh, it's been gathering for quite some time. I guess the, the final blow was this letter from these um, these former captains in the board lost confidence in Castle. She figured that and decided to, to hand in her resignation. So yeah, that's essentially what's happened. She was appointed in 2017 after Bill Pulver. By all accounts, left the game in a pretty bad state. And again, I don't know that myself. That's what I've read. That the game was not doing well that if it wasn't for the lions tour in 20 what was it where they lost to the lions that one was a big financial injection which essentially if they hadn't had that 
um, would have seen them in a pretty bad state. 2013? Yeah. That Lions tour was a big cash injection for Aussie rugby, otherwise that would have been a big trouble. And, yeah, she's got a decent background with, with um, being a chief executive of New Zealand Netball and the Canterbury League team. I know there's a lot of people, and I say she's divisive, a lot of you guys will probably, if you know her, don't like her. Based on the fact that she's got a non-rugby background, personally for me, I don't really care what background they've got as long as they can do a job. I don't think you need to be a particular rugby person to know how to be a chief executive. I don't think that the skills you know, are kind of mutually exclusive. If you've been a chief executive of a, a, a sports team, I don't think that rules you out of do, doing the same job for another sport. Like the NHL, the ice hockey, the guy who's the commissioner, he's very unpopular because nobody likes the commissioner, but he's seen the game expand, player salaries have gone up and whatnot. He used to be like some executive job in the NBA and he did the same, got the next promotion essentially to ice hockey. He's been doing it like 20 years, so more maybe. I don't have a big deal with people switching codes. In some ways, it's actually kind of refreshing to have someone who's a bit kind of out of that bubble of the sport itself. And a lot of the critics of her said, oh, she doesn't know rugby. So yeah, but from what I understand about rugby in Australia, it's something of an old boys club. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of sports can be like that. A lot of places can be like that. I've heard that about a lot of other industries as well. Um, but yeah, uh, having her as a bit of an external factor, maybe also put a bit of a target on her as well. So um, yeah, she doesn't really fit with the old boys club, being a Kiwi, being from a non-rugby background. But um, yeah, like I said, for me, I didn't really care. People go on about her appearance as well. Um, you know, being a goth look because she like, use black lipstick and whatnot again i don't really care even eddie jones when i watched that movie the brighton miracle the other day uh he said something about like one of his assistants told him the players don't like you eddie this is before the the world cup and he basically said i don't care it's not a popularity contest this is not social media i'm here to do my job so that's that's kind of what that comes down to as well uh for for me so yeah, Rugby Australia, I think when she inherited it, wasn't in a great position, from what I understand. Uh, you'll spend a lot of money on, on getting big league guys to um, to sign for the Wallabies and whatnot, for Super Rugby teams and play for the Wallabies, and neglected the grassroots level a bit, or a lot. So, um, yeah, Israel Folau, that controversy probably didn't help as well. It definitely didn't help. Uh, that one was a pretty divisive one as well. Um stormed through the media for all the wrong reasons, brought attention to rugby again for all the wrong reasons, and also kind of having a fallout with Michael Checker definitely didn't help as well. Although I think, I mean, because she inherited Checker, she got Scott Johnson to come in as director of rugby. I think that was kind of a good move because one of the things that he was tasked with was helping with selections, and for all the grief Checker gets, I think his biggest weakness is his selections. Again, it's a bit of an old boys club thing where he picks a lot of Waratahs guys when like Ned Hannigan is the obvious one that's probably not up to scratch. And there's other better players in that position that didn't get chosen for whatever reason. So I think the response to that was actually kind of a good one. But um, yeah, um, she's been given a lot of stick about just the state of Aussie rugby and Super Rugby not putting bums on seats. I don't think that one's unique to Australia. Super Rugby has its problems, man. And attendance is one that is across the board. Attendance is a down, I think, everywhere. Even the New Zealand crowds, which I think are okay, are still well down on what they used to be. One thing about the lockdown is they've been showing a lot of old rugby games. Some of them not even that old. And the crowds were just bigger. That is just, I think, an indisputable fact. Crowds used to be bigger, and that's far from unique to Australia for them being down. If anything, the Sun Wolves when they're playing in Japan, seem to have some of the best attendances in Super Rugby, and um, that's going to be them uh, going after this year. But anyway, so yeah, she turned down Fox's offer. Um, she was looking for more coin, essentially. Um, some positives from what I read, and again, this is mostly from an article that I read, or an open letter from Hugh Cavill from Green and Gold Rugby. He mentioned 
that Australia is one of the serious contenders for getting the 2027 World Cup, and that would be a heck of a cash injection, even if it is quite a few years down the track. Uh, they got Dave Rennie as coach. I put the note about plus Scott Johnson, I think, was a, a bit of a boon as well. But what happens with Dave Rennie, I guess, is one that remains to be seen. But yeah, Dave Rennie, seeing as he was called for an interview by the All Blacks, the fact that the Wallabies managed to secure him, I think, was a pretty good move. And the under-20s last year beat New Zealand 24-0, which is... Um, also seemingly like something's going on good with them. Now, I don't know if you can put that on her. Uh, this under-20 squad that's come through has obviously been the product of many years of uh, development and whatnot, but I don't think the game is maybe in as bad a place as what they say. And if it is, I don't think it's all down to Raylene Castle, one person anyway. So, um, yeah, I am a little bit negative about the coup which has gone on to see her replaced, essentially because... It seems to be a bit old boys club feeling about it for me. And the state Aussie rugby, they seem to be largely putting it on her from what I've read. That seems a bit disingenuous. Um, but yeah, even I was picking up on the Fox Media thing. And like I said, I'm pretty thick with that kind of stuff. And I don't, I don't say that to try and be modest. Like seriously, I'll go to meetings... Sometimes with my old boss, uh, I used to have a frontline job and then I got like a, not a management job, but kind of a, a middle, a between job. And I used to go with my manager to meetings and I'd meet these people and they would talk about stuff and I would walk out going, that was nice, Aren't all these nice people. And then my boss would sit me down back in our office and say, no, 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 no. These guys are gunning for this work. They want to get rid of this guy. They're trying to do this, all these like political stuff that was going on in the background and just straight over my head. So I'm not the most in tune with that kind of thing. But even I could feel Fox Media had a pretty big agenda against Raylene Castle. Even I could feel that over the last, I don't know, weeks and months. So, yeah, it's kind of not surprising that these guys, for me, have um, have really got on the anti-Raylene kind of um, bandwagon. So what's going to happen with the future? Obviously, they need a new chief executive. Um, there may be an opportunity to get something going during... Um, the lockdown, who knows, that, that might be one that um, that remains to be seen. But the future of who coaches the Wallabies is also one. Dave Rennie may look at this as an opportunity to kind of cut and run. I hope not, because I think he's, uh, in his time, he's essentially lifted whichever place he's gone to. So I'm hoping that he will be able to do the same with the Aussies. But... Um, yeah, that's a bit of an interesting one. Like I said, I know she's a divisive figure. Some people don't like her for whatever reasons. And as I said, I'm definitely no expert. It's mostly me reading articles that other people have written to get kind of my own feeling for it. But yeah, from what I could see, I didn't think she was doing a bad job. But rugby is in a pretty difficult position from what she'd inherited. There's some positives. Uh, it's a shame to see her go, but... If she is gone, I still hope that whoever takes over is able to do better. Uh, I want to see Aussie rugby grow and develop and be able to compete with the likes of AFL and uh, and rugby league, even if it's not to be on that same level, to at least get back to a similar level that it used to be. Um, yeah, because I think rugby union is not that bigger game in terms of having proper top contender teams so having a strong australia is an important one for the rugby championship for the world cup for for rugby as a whole so yeah it's going to take someone pretty clever onto it and uh what not to do the job is that phil kearns based on his commentary i wouldn't have thought so but hey uh again i shouldn't be judging him the same way i shouldn't be telling people not to judge reeling castle for her appearance i shouldn't be judging his leadership abilities to to run a big organization based on his commentary because it's a different skill set so um if it is him we'll see what happens i'll give him the benefit of the doubt and um yeah we will see anyway guys you guys let me know your thoughts and uh i'll talk to you soon see you later